Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm really sorry I've been missing an action for a while, but for the last six weeks I have been touring America. I have literally had the best six weeks of my life and it's really, really what I needed after everything that was going on in my life. So I'm finally back and I have filmed for you today this look, which is using all my new American makeup purchases. So if you'd like to see what I bought whilst out in America and what I think of the makeup I purchased, then just keep watching. So quick disclaimer, not everything I'll use in this video will be purely American drugstore. I'm sure a lot of it you can get in the American drugstore or in American shops like Sephora, etc. But some of this I did purchase in the UK because first I didn't buy it because I already had it and secondly because I didn't have enough luggage. So if I'd had more luggage space I definitely would have bought more makeup but luckily I was restricted. So the first thing I'm going to use is the Insta Fix and Go 2-in-1 primer, uh, primer and setting spray. So I'm just going to spray this all over my face to start. If you're lazy with putting on primer like I am this is just the easiest way to prime your skin, make it nice and tacky for that foundation to then go on. Next thing, which is probably my favourite purchase from America, is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. These are incredible. I'm sure you've seen these raved about a ton on American YouTube channels. I know like Tati Westbrook, um, Manny MUA and Laura Lee absolutely love these foundations and I'm not surprised, they are incredible. The first time I went into had really limited stock and I think I got these in CVS. Um, and the first shade I got is Porcelain, which is far too light for me, especially now, now I've got a slight tan. But this, even at my fairest, was very fair. So I also picked up um, Soft Ivory and Soft Beige and I'm in between the two at the moment so I mix these together. I think soft beige would be perfect when I'm most tanned, um, soft ivory when my tan's fading will be perfect, but porcelain and soft ivory mixed together will be my absolutely perfect natural fairest affair colour. I'm going to take soft ivory and just put that, oh, in my eye apparently, just take a few swipes of that and then take soft beige and put that in between. I don't use as much as soft beige just because soft ivory is sort of a better colour for me. The coverage of this foundation is incredible. It's definitely veering more veering. It's defi definitely, can't speak, you can tell I haven't done this in ages. It's definitely verging on fuller coverage but I have absolutely been loving it. If you're not a full coverage gal then you will not like this at all but it just le leaves your skin looking so flawless. It still gives it a bit of dew. It's just incredible. Look, it's just giving me the most flawless coverage. I look very plastic right now and very two-dimensional but we'll work on that with contour and highlight and concealer and all the rest of that good stuff. Also another thing I got which I should mention which I know is in the froze like f was like in the froze favorite thing to use over summer was the IT Cosmetics SPF 50 CC cream. Now this is in the shade light and even tanned this is still very dark. So if you fake tan and you're naturally fair skin this would be a dream. If you're any paler than I am right now, this will not work for you. It's beautiful, gives really good coverage for a CT cream, really light, and obviously it's got SPF 50 in, so it's really, really good at protecting you from the sun. But my only gripe is it's just far too dark. Anyway, moving on, the next thing I got is the Photo Focus, so the same as the foundation, by Wet n Wild Concealer. And this is beautiful. This is in the shade Light Ivory. This I do actually really like to mix with my Collection Lasting Perfection, so I will do that. I know Collection's actually a UK brand. You can get your hands on it if you're in America on Amazon, I believe, and I actually don't think it costs that much more. That Light Ivory shade is a perfect match with the um, Soft Beige and Soft Ivory but I like my concealer to be a little bit lighter than that. Um, I like it to really, really highlight. So if you watch my channel, then you'll know I don't powder because my skin, as I mentioned, is super dry. If I put powder on it, it just looks really, really cakey, but an amazing drugstore. Um, I don't know if you can get it at the drugstore if it's just drugstore priced. American powder is the RCMA No Color Powder. This is fantastic. This is phenomenal for baking. Also, I've heard if you've got oily skin just for setting all over, this works really well. Just a translucent powder, so it's good for everyone. So this is where I'm going to cheat a little bit on my eye look, because for my crease I'm using a palette. I know I definitely think you can get it in America, but again on Amazon or something. But this is um, the Makeup Revolution Professional Eyeshadow Palette in Neutrals versus Neutrals. I love this. As you can tell, I took it to America because I completely smashed the mirror. 
but I literally use this every t time I did a going out eye look, I use this. This is my go-to palette. I absolutely love pinks and purples on my light green eyes and with my skin tone. And especially with the glitter you'll see me put on, this looked bomb.com. I'm going to start off with these two colours in my crease. So start off with the lighter one and then deepen it with the darker one. I'm putting that quite high up in my crease. So as you'll know, if you watch my channel, I have very hooded eyes. So I always take my first crease colour pretty high up just to make my lid look a lot bigger. I kind of cheat it with um, the glitter I'll use as well, you'll see. So for this, I'm just taking a big, I think this is my um, R36. I absolutely love this. It's like the perfect fluffy brush, brush for your crease because it is just so big. But because I've used it so much, all the writing is rubbed off. Then on the same brush, I'm taking that mauvey purple tone, just a bit deeper than that initial crease. And I'm putting that right into my socket and then any excess just dragging up to blend in with that first crease shade. I'm gonna take this pink, just take a tiny little bit on this brush, which is an E27 by Morphe, and just put that right at the very base of the crease, just to intensify the look and make it look a lot more going out. And then any excess, I'm just gonna run on the outer corner trying to avoid the in inner third of my eye. Going back in with the R36 and just blending that all together. You guys will know if you watch my channel again, as I've said 15 million times in this video, I am obsessed with the Stila Liquid um, Magnificent Metals in Rose Gold Retro. And when I was in the US, they're exactly the same price in dollars as they are pounds. So it's 24 pounds in the UK and they were $24. So obviously converted, it's cheaper in the US. So I got bronzed bell and this is very very similar this is just as it says more bronzy than rose gold but they're not neither are as intense as the other neither are more pigmented they're very very close dupes of each other just this one's got more of a bronzy tone than a rose gold tone and I just put this straight on my lid and when I said I cheat my crease I take this a lot higher than my natural um, crease, just so you can actually see it when my eyes open. Otherwise, because my eyes are so hooded, you can't see much and it's a waste of time. And taking it and leaving about a third of my eye uncovered. I just leave that to dry for a few seconds before I blend anything else into it. Then what I'm gonna do is dip back into this palette and take the shade one along from that pink we used, which is a slightly darker barrier tone. And I'm just gonna lightly blend that into the glitter we've just laid down and bring it into the crease. Then again, going back in with the E27, just making sure that's all blended and just dragging it through the crease. Lastly, R36, blending everything together, making sure that glitter is perfectly blended into the crease. The thing you will find with this glitter compared to the rose gold, I found it has slightly more fallout. Not enough for me to do my eyes first and then my eyeshadow because I would much prefer doing my base and then my eyeshadow. And obviously, because I've already done my foundation and concealer, etc., I'm just gonna go on and do my lower lash lines. I'm taking these two shades we used in the crease to start with, right along the lower lash. Bring it quite far down, because this is a smokier look. Making sure to also connect it back to the eyeshadow we've already placed on our lid. Lastly, to finish off the look, I'm just gonna take a tiny little bit of that very dark, darkest berry color we used on the outer corner, and just run that about a third of the way in. Then, if I do have any glitters that have fallen out for that eyeshadow, I just take a fluffy powder brush and literally just flick them away. Then I'm going to take a new product, which you can also get in the UK, but on high demand in the UK. So anytime I go into an Urban Decay, this is always sold out. But this is the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Liner in Midnight Cowboy. And it's the first time I'm using it and I'm so excited. I got this in Vegas and never got a chance to use it. So I'm just going to put this on the inner corner oh and run it along the lower lash line right up until that really dark pink that looks sick i really hope you can see it on camera the gold and the bronze complement each other so nicely so i'm gonna just start off by curling my eyelashes as always these are actually from sephora so i presume you can get them in sephora still um i didn't buy these in america my cousin bought them from the paris sephora but i'm sure well i know they have an abundance of eyelash colors at sephora so if you can't get these pink ones i'm sure they're all very very similar so my current go-to mascara combination it's obviously, as you guys will expect, the Maybelline Lash Sensational. But when I was in America, I managed to get the Voluminous Lash Paradise. The American version of our L'Oreal Paradise Ecstatic. I have to be honest, they're exactly the same. They really are very, very similar. So if you're really like, you've heard all the American influencers rave about the Voluminous Lash Paradise, don't worry because our Lash Ecstatic is exactly the same. So I always start off 
with the um, Maybelline Lash Sensational because I find this just really spreads my lashes. The brush is perfect for giving that initial like scoop and volume of your lashes and it also separates them really really nicely. Whereas I find the other one to be a little bit clumpier. It packs on more product making your lashes longer and look more amazing and more false but it leaves them quite clumpy so I always go in with this one first. So once I'm happy they're all coated sufficiently I go in with the L'Oreal um, Lash Paradise. Literally look at this packaging though. I've had this for like, I bought this in New York so I've had it about five weeks and I've used it most days but the packaging has completely come off which is so disappointing because it was really pretty rose gold packaging. So then I just go on top with this mascara and it just gives my lashes this amazing volume and length and I absolutely love it. Then I'm going to use something I was dying to purchase and I've actually bought this a backup I bought from one of my best friends who was out there, Lydia. This is the Butter Bronzer in Light. Kathleen Lights, who is one of my favourite YouTubers, always raves about this bronzer. She's like, it's perfect for people with light to medium skin tone, especially lights, obviously better for people with fairer skin tones like me. This stuff is phenomenal. It smells like a pina colada drink and it just is the perfect contour and bronzer. I'm obsessed with it. Today I'm just taking my R14 by Morphe and I'm gonna contour with it first. I'm just gonna slightly contour my nose with it. I find nose contour a lot harder when you've already got eyeshadow on. I much prefer it doing it before eyeshadow. Then I go in my, with my bigger R2 brush, take loads of it on the brush and then also just bronze over the top. Just so my rest of my skin looks just as bronze as my cheekbones, otherwise it'll look a little bit strange. So I'm gonna use the RCMA just to do a little bit of baking. I probably wouldn't usually, but as I mentioned it, I thought I would show you. So I'm just gonna use this just here on the outer part of my face, just to really chisel in that cheekbone. While that's settling, I'm gonna move on to the blush I bought. And this is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. I'd heard so many good things about this blush and as you know I'm not the biggest blush wearer. I wear it more now just to tie in my bronzer and highlight but this is really really stunning. It's kind of not what I expected it. This is a lot more like corally and a lot more intense than I thought it would intense than I thought it would be but it is still really gorgeous. Very pigmented so one dab, look how bright that is. So I'm just gonna do one dab, tap off and just put the tiniest bit. It gives it this really beautiful like pink flush but it's also got gold baked through it so it gives you this beautiful like golden glow as well. So if you don't like highlight or you like a really subtle highlight this would be perfect if you are a blush wearer as well. Hopefully before this or after this video goes up I will have my America film ready to show you guys. Fingers crossed. We'll see. We'll see. But it'll definitely come up soon and it'll show you what I was up to for the last five, six weeks. Hence why you guys haven't seen me and I've been a bit MIA recently. Then I'm just going to take um, the brush and wipe away the bake. And then for my favourite thing, highlighters. So while I was away, I'm quite proud of myself. I only bought two highlights. And the first one I picked up is probably my favourite out of the two. This is the Maybelline Master Chrome Metallic Highlight in the shade 100 Molten Gold. This is absolutely incredible. One issue with it. My one issue with it, it is very dark for fair skin. When I'm tan, I mean, I used this when I was fair. When I'm this kind of medium tanned, it's still quite dark. It's dark when you're fair, it's still quite dark when I'm this colour. So this would be amazing for medium skin tones. They need to bring out a golden shade that's just slightly lighter, not as deep, because it kind of creates this kind of darker cast on your skin. But still, stunning, especially for body highlights, so I'll show you that. The second one I got is this one. This is the Wet n Wild's Mega Glow Highlighter in Precious Petals. Again, absolutely stunning. This is a pinky undertone, same exact issue. They're both ideal for like light to deep skin tones, definitely not fair. When I'm this tan, they're both still a little bit dark. If I was more tan, they'd be beautiful. But these two colours are sensational. They're absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you can see they both look like metal in the pan. They're that beautiful. They're so pigmented. But that never stops me. I'm going to use them anyway. So I'm going to take the Molten Gold. And I'm just going to pop that on. And you'll see instantly how stunning that is. Oh, so beautiful. I'm also just going to dab into the pinkier one, which is the Precious Petals and just put that right on the tops of my cheekbones just to really intensify that and give it a real pop of colour. I find this one is the one that really needs to be for like medium skin tone because 
this one really does create a cast on your skin. But you can see, I mean, that glow is next level. I'm also just going to pop some of my Cupid's bow. I'm just going to use my finger for that, actually. Some on the tip of my nose and on the bridge. I'm also going to apply it to my shoulders so you can see how beautiful it is on the skin. Highlight gasm. This is just gorgeous. I'll apply it both of them on top of each other so you can see. I mean, look at that glow. Boom, boom, boom. Stunning. To finish off, before I put lipstick on, I'm going to take this setting spray, which I wanted for so long, and this was the hardest thing out of everything to find. It took me so long to find it. It's the Milani Make It Last Setting Spray. I always like to fan my face after putting setting sprays on because I feel like it just sinks in quicker and it just gives it a better all over look. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and do my brows. I won't show these on camera because it's the same process I always do. Just my friend Lydia, if you're watching this, hey Lids, um, has taught me how to do brows a little bit better and a little bit less intense. So I'm going to try recreate that now. So I'll be back with my brows completed. And then now I've finished my brows, what I'm going to quickly go ahead and do is take the Molten Gold Highlight and run that just underneath my brows, just to highlight that brow bone. And then the last things I purchased was this, and it's the Sephora Favourites Give Me Some Nude Lip. If you know me, you know my Jeffree Star Celebrity Skin or Rimmel Asia are my go-to lip combinations. And this was 28 US dollars, um, and it's valued at 70 US dollars. So I think this is such a cute little idea. It's got um, the Kat Von D liquid lip, Buxom liquid lip, Tarte, um, I think Rainforest for the Sea lipstick, a Bite lipstick, a Makeup Forever lipstick, and a Ciate uh, liquid velvet. So let's, it's the first time I've opened it, hence why I'm struggling. Oh, why is it so Oh, and they all fall out. This color, these are beautiful. Should we have a look at all of them? So this is the Buxom liquid lip, and this is in the shade Dolly. This is the Tarte lipstick. Oh, they're so cute. Oh, these are dreamy. I don't know if you can see that one. And this is in the shade Rum Punch. Then we've got a Baby Makeup Forever. I'm going to put them back in. And this is, oh, like a deeper nude. And this is in the shade... It's the Artistic Rouge Cream in C211. That's stunning. This is the Bite Lipstick, and I really wanted a Bite Lipstick. If you don't know about this company, they are actually edible. I wouldn't advise eating a lipstick because you paid good money for it, but they are edible. Oh, that's stunning. That looks really, really matte. This is the Multi Stick in Brioche. Cute name. And then we've got two left. We've got the Kat Von D Liquid Lip in Ludwig, I presume. Um, but this is weirdly cracking in the bottle. So that doesn't have high hopes that it's not drying, but that's stunning. Or we've got, oh, this is pretty, the Ciate London Liquid Lipstick in Bittersweet. I actually don't know, I'm gonna go with a liquid lipstick, so I know that much, just because I'm going out, so I'd like it to last longer. Oh, these are all so stunning. I sort of wanna go with a rosy, just because I never wear it. So I'm gonna take the Buxom Liquid Lipstick in the shade Dolly. Oh, it's not a liquid lipstick, this is a gloss. Screw it, we're not wearing this one because this is a gloss, not a liquid lipstick. It's beautiful, stunning, but I wanted a liquid lip, as I mentioned about five times. Oh my god, that tastes incredible. It's like minty and it's tingling my lips. Oh, that's beauts. I'm going to try the Kat Von D. I really hope this is a liquid lip now. Yeah, it looks like it. Wow, this is like the thinnest formula for a liquid lip. I really don't know I'm trying to talk and do it. Ooh. I am obsessed with that colour. It is so beautiful. That was the Kat Von D in Ludwig. Absolutely incredible with this look. And there you have it, guys. That is my completed look using all the new American makeup that I bought. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to give it a massive thumbs up and also click my face to subscribe. I love you guys lots and I will see you very soon. Bye!